Hello everybody, welcome back to another high level match of StarCraft 2. My name is Loco and what I've got for you today is a best of five series of Terran vs Protoss. That's the grand finals of the ESL Open Cup number 172 for the European region. This is a best of five series where in game number one we find ourselves on the largest map in the current map pool. We find ourselves on altitude and spawning right here in the top right hand corner playing with the blue Protoss probes from Germany. We have Showtime. And his opponent in the opposite corner with the Red Terran as CVs. He's from Poland and he goes by the name of Spirit. Oh, it's Mr. Showtime. Okay, who's starting this series off with a very quick probe. There's already a gateway as well as a pylon inside of the main base. But I don't think you're really gonna, yeah, send a worker this early if you're not up to some shenanigans. So I guess Showtime is gonna go for a little bit of gateway aggression. Okay, fair enough. Normally, Showtime is the type of guy who will defend, 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 but over the last couple of months, it's become very clear that Protoss players that are successful in this matchup, they're all playing very aggressively. So maybe Showtime is taking a page out of their book as well, as he now decides indeed for a second gateway. And that gateway is all the way at the bottom of the map. Spirit at this point it doesn't know what he's playing against. He sees a probe coming in right now, but that looks like a pretty conventional probe scout timing to me. And I wonder if Spirit is going to be picking up on this. Leading to this particular Grand Finals, both gentlemen were definitely having a good day. So Spirit ended up taking down Hero Marine in the semi-finals. He took down Clem in the quarterfinals as well, and Mana in the round of 16. I actually believe over the last couple of months, Spirit has really closed the distance between him and Hero Marine and him and Clem. I mean, when it comes to top-level European Terrans, those are the names that come to mind. And I really do believe, that's a little bit sloppy, uh, that Spirit is, yeah, amongst them right now. Spirit is looking very, very solid. Showtime ended up taking down Max Pax in the semifinals, 2-0. He took down Lembo, 2-0, and also Trigger, 2-0 as well. So, honestly, very impressive results for both of these players. Obviously, Max Pax, he's, yeah, been overshadowing Showtime a little bit, I would say, over the last couple of months. Although, that being said, you always gotta put a little asterisk right next to Max Pax's name, because, of course, he does not play offline tournaments. Either way, let's see. This is the first moment where Spirit figures out what he's playing against. He's got a couple Marines over here. They're gonna stand their ground. I guess they're accepting their fate, because honestly, what are you gonna do against that long-range Stalker? Just trying to get as many units out as possible, and standing his ground certainly was the right move. I wonder if maybe cycling another SCV towards that bunker would have been a better move, but for now... Okay, we're just gonna double down on the aggression. For now, at the very least, Spirit manages to hold. Yeah, this bunker isn't done yet, though, and not having that bunker finished is a little bit annoying. Stalker, ooh, has accumulated some shields once again. Jimmy, okay, gets the final hit. That is actually really nice right here for Spirit, and that may very well allow him to stabilize. The SCVs are also smelling blood, apparently, as they wanna go after the Adept. The Robo Facility, though, is also something that Spirit is not aware of, so this can still catch him off guard, but this is certainly a very good start right here for the Polish Terran. We have a little bit of a, uh, a love triangle over here between all of those uh, SCVs as they repair each other back up. Not something you see all too frequently. Uh, that is not a reactor or a tech lab, it's actually a supply depot, just to prevent those units from coming into the main base. It's kind of like the Protoss versus Protoss matchup right now. And Immortal is also being crowned out, out here for Showtime. So that one is going to be joining the battlefield very shortly. We're mostly just trying to buy time for that. Yeah, Showtime is just going all out with the aggression. Warp Gates are going to finish up. There's a fourth Warp Gate as well. So this will allow him to just get a tremendous amount of units out. He can go for a Prism. That's exactly what he does. On the back of this too. So one Immortal and then straight into a Prism. The Adepts apparently decided to shade forward for now. Mostly just softening up the SCVs, I suppose, but now the Immortal is available. We're gonna be warping in as many units as possible. That Bunker, though, is beautiful right here for the Terran player, but the question is, does he have enough stuff? That Widowmine is not going to be able to fire. Uh, we do need to make sure that we save as many of these units as possible. Even a couple of mules have just now landed right next to the Bunker just to repair it in case that was necessary. Spirit is holding on, though, and that's the most important part right here, right? As long as he manages to hold on, everything's gonna be okay. Protoss can't really expand very easily on the back of this. I mean, he could make an expansion, but the problem is then 
Well, he's likely going to lose these structures. Instead, we're going to do a little bit of elevator play. And I think that's really clever, trying to bypass that bunker altogether. With good juggling over here, with that prism, you can get a ton of value. And that's exactly what Showtime was looking for. No bunker inside of the main base. He didn't really hesitate, right? And there we go. I think this is... Uh the end for game number one. Not really a whole lot here anymore that Spirit can do to contest this. There is the Siege Tank available, but as long as the Prism is around, what in the world are you gonna do? Yeah, the Prism is uh, providing so much utility here. Technically, okay, he loses the Immortal. Technically speaking, this is losable, but you'd have to try. <laughs> GG. I really like seeing that strategy come out of Showtime to start off the series. I know that Showtime has been mixing it up a little bit, and honestly, in Protoss vs. Terran, it almost seems like you have to mix it up. More aggressive playstyles just simply seem to be better at the professional level right now in the current meta of the game. But anyways, coming out of Showtime, I yeah, I think that's really cool. Generally speaking, he can play a little bit predictably, where he's doing the same things very frequently, and he's doing the same thing over and over and over again. But, yeah, having a little bit of range, a little bit of variety, especially when you're playing a series, can be incredibly helpful. Anyhow, Neo Humanity is going to be game number two. Barracks on top of the high ground, SCV. Okay. It's going to just... No, we're not even going to hold the Watchtower for a second, okay? No vision needed whatsoever. Instead, we're going to be sending that SCV straight across. Yeah, and I think this is going to be an engineering bay block. It's something that... Terran players have always been playing in this particular matchup, so basically what you do is you make the NG Bay, but you don't actually finish it. What you can do is you cancel it before the Protoss players can kill it, and then, uh, well, you get the majority of your resources back while being incredibly annoying. Normally in this particular matchup, Protoss players don't actually send a probe down towards the low ground early, so there's a good chance Showtime is going to be pulling a probe at like 300 minerals. Exactly like he's doing right now. He wants to build the Nexus, but he can't. Well, he's seen the timing right here of the SCV, so I guess, uh, yeah, he figured out exactly what he's playing against this. Where are we going now? Ah, we're going to go to the base right here in the back of the... Hmm. This is awkward, right? Zerg players do this all the time, where they take their third base as their very first expansion, but Zerg units are also about 10 times faster on average. Ooh. Are we going to commit to... Uh, no, I don't think so. Anyways, Zerg units are also way faster than Protoss units, so this can certainly make things a little bit awkward. And you're almost forcing the Protoss to now play three base, right? Because Protoss really wants to take this base, so everything is connected. And that's going to alleviate a lot of early game pressure out of Spirit here. Or I guess off of Spirit. Anyhow, good start right there for the Terran. I always like seeing it. Even though at this level of play, it shouldn't really matter all too much. It's still incredibly annoying to have to deal with. So, Command Center coming up on the back of this right here for the Terran 2. He has cancelled the NG Bay, so he's gotten some money back again as well, so he can actually afford building all of these structures. Obviously, the main downside, though, of going for an Engineering Bay block early on is that you have investments, right? You have resources invested in things that aren't particularly helpful on your side of the map, so you effectively end up delaying your own Command Center as well, because you've spent those minerals on starting up the NG Bay, and even though you cancel it, you do get some of your money back. You, uh, yeah, rather have those minerals sooner rather than later. There's no compound interest in StarCraft 2, other than maybe, you know, handicapping your opponent a little bit with their early game advancement. Anyhow, good scout right there by our Protoss player. He sees exactly what's going on. We're gonna be going for transition right here with the factory. Double Hellions already coming up, Starport all coming up as well. Terran players seem to be quite fond of dropping Hellions inside of the Protoss player's base. Wouldn't be surprised, although uh, Jimmy and the squad are apparently trying to catch those adepts. He's anticipating some clever movement over here, but instead we're gonna yeah, just have the adepts right here at the front. He may very well be sending them across. Widow Mines on the back of this too. Okay, so it's gonna be Hellions into Widow Mines. Fair enough. Robo facility right here for Showtime. He's already got himself the Robo... Um, oh, sorry, he's already got himself the Twilight Council done right now, and he's... Chrono boosting out the blink upgrade. Very helpful, but until that blink upgrade is done, Terran's gonna be the one who gets to dictate the pace right here on the minimap at the very least. They get to control most of the map. Aliens, in the meantime, have driven on over towards the main base as well, and this is one of those problems that you run into when your, ma your, your main base and your expansion are disconnected. 
Yeah, it's very difficult to be in all places at once, and while Zerklings would be able to run around very quickly, especially with speed, Protoss doesn't have that luxury. Protoss in the early game quite literally has like three units, and when your bases are disconnected, yeah, defending multiple areas at once is very tricky. Blink, however, is going to finish up. So, the build that most of the top level Protoss players... Here's the Widow Mine drop, by the way. Is he gonna get any damage in? Okay. Should kill a little bit. Nothing too crazy, though. The build that most of the top level Protoss players seem to find most success with in this particular matchup is that 4-gate Blink style. So, at this point, we don't have any of that coming up, but both Hero as well as Max Pex, who I think are the best Protoss versus Terran players in the world right now, they are very fond of that 4-gate Blink. Showtime, I think he's gonna be planting down a Nexus here momentarily, mostly just using the Blink here to take control of the map once again, and yeah, to try and uh, shut down this aggression here from the Terran. 11 probes have already gone down, though. Okay, one Widow Mine got dropped off in the back. Secondary Widow Mine dropped, this time around with four of those. A little bit annoying, yeah, just forcing a lot of lost mining time. I am not really liking this game nearly as much as the previous one for Showtime. There's the Widow Mine over here as well. Did that one, is that the one that walked all the way around? Hold up. Oh, no, he didn't have to walk all the way around, obviously. You could just, okay, derp. Uh, you could just literally walk down the little alleyway right here that Mr. Showtime had created for himself. Okay. Now these Stalkers on the other side of the map are gonna have to get a uh, tremendous amount of damage in. I mean, the Widowmine shenanigans isn't even done yet. There is an Observer coming forward too to provide high ground vision, but this is denying so much time. Spirit purposefully not burrowing that. There's already a siege tank in the main base. There's a bunker waiting too. Even the Viking has landed. This is, uh, yeah, not looking all too hot right here for Showtime. The prob uh, problem is, right? Oh god, okay, he still blinked into the main base. Brilliant positioning right here from Spirit. The problem is that Terran is very quickly outgrowing the Protoss at this point. Oh, okay, and with that disaster of an early game, Showtime decides to simply tap out, knowing very well that there's only a very tiny chance he's actually gonna be able to hold the next attack from Spirit. And that all started with the Bay block, right? Maybe in theory, <clears throat> it isn't really gonna hurt the Protoss player that much, but in practice, we have games like the one that we just saw, where the Hellion gets in, and the Marines march across the map, and then the Widow Mines follow up, and by the time you finally get your Blink Stalkers into the opponent's main base, there's a bunker, there's a siege tank, there's even a landed Viking, which is surprisingly good uh, against that particular army from the Protoss player. Yeah, it's easy to mess up, the margin for error is tiny. Very nicely played right there from Spirit, who... Okay, is gonna just do it again, I guess. <laughs> I wouldn't mind seeing it. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing a proxy of barracks either, but I don't think that's the timing for it. Nah. Just gonna be a barracks right here on top of the high ground. Okay. Grasven is gonna be map 3. Certainly, by the way, a bit of an early GG right there from Showtime. Uh, I wouldn't have minded seeing him sit in that... Uh, or seeing him sit in that game for a little bit longer. Because honestly, it... Uh, I mean, it wasn't, it was mostly game over, but he could have tried to put all of his eggs in one basket for at least a little bit, right? Okay, so yeah, he wanted to go NG Bay, and he is gonna go NG Bay, but now there's already a probe over here trying to be a nuisance, and obviously when you see it early, you can also sort of adjust. Okay, well the adjustment we're gonna make is that we're gonna try and kill the engineering bay with probes. Fair enough. Already though, Spirit messing with his opponent a little bit. Protoss always very built order dependent. It can be kind of difficult to figure out exactly what the best move is. But this Nexus will go down here eventually. Obviously it is important that he doesn't get the kill on this, right? Yeah, okay, he needs to cancel it, because otherwise he lose about 100 minerals. Sometimes, especially at lower leagues, when you have players going for engineering bay blocks, they will, no, not cancel it in time, or just make sloppy mistakes here and there. Lose the SCD, for example, that would also completely justify it for Protoss. But yeah, this time around, Showtime not gonna be caught with his fence down once again. Okay. Well, he did hit a little bit of a supply block there, maybe a bit late on the second pylon. Oh, I couldn't even find the pylon. <laughs> I was wondering where that one went. I was already looking at the minimap, trying to figure out if maybe he proxied it, but no. The second pylon right here in a very curious position, right straight down from the natural. Okay. Stargate this time around. No warp gate research just yet. 
This is this, uh, the type of style, right, that Showtime likes to go for in pretty much all of his games. We've got ourselves a triple Rex opener right now from Spirit, so he's mixing it up a little bit as well. Generally, what you do is you go double tech lap on these two. First one goes Stimpak, second one goes uh, the Combat Shields, and then you just hit your opponent in the face as soon as you've got a large amount of Marines with Stimpak and Combat Shields. I mean, it's a pretty basic build, but very powerful. Bunker, perfectly timed. You love to see it. Did he get vision right there of the additional structures? He did definitely not. No, he wants to see. Yeah, problem is, the vision radius on one of those shades is quite small, so you don't actually see all too much. But luckily, there's an oracle on the back of this, and oracles not only deal a lot of damage, they're also fantastic when it comes to scouting. Alrighty, so, let's see how much damage we can do. One problem that um, Protoss players run into, right, is that the micro ability of their units is incredibly high, but you also are almost required to micro uh, to micro them very nicely because they're they're quite expensive, especially if you compare them to Terran units. So, miss microing your Marines not a huge problem because they're relatively cheap. But if you lose like you know, if you lose three Marines, it's relatively playable. If you lose two Stalkers, it's basically game over. Right, so it's very easy to... Okay, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but... It's it's very easy to accidentally lose the game as Protoss, and I think that's one of the problems that the, the top-level Protoss players are running into. These Terran players aren't really messing up anymore, especially the nerf as well to the Disruptor, right? That one has hit quite hard. Where, sure, Disruptor play was incredibly prevalent, but... There wasn't really much of an alternative added instead of that either, so... Anyways, Protoss players seem in a... They seem to be in a bit of an awkward spot right now when it comes to this particular matchup. I think it's fine in Protoss versus Protoss. It's fine in Protoss versus Zerk, it seems as well, though. Also, a little dicey. Protoss versus Terran, though, seems incredibly hard right now from the Protoss' point of view. Look at the timing right there on that missile turret. I think if, if Terran doesn't mess up... Ugh, that's huge. Okay, that's game over. Uh, if Terran doesn't mess up... It's very difficult to beat them in a longer game. If Protoss, however, messes up, it feels like it's game over right away. I mean, it, this doesn't have to be game over, but this is a disaster. Losing two Oracles here, basically for free. You don't have to lose the game from here, but you're gonna have to play catch-up. You're gonna have to play catch-up, and that is the type of mistake you cannot afford to make at this level of play. I know there's always gonna be people that'll be like, Ah, Terran, too overpowered. For example, I, I saw some comments yesterday, so spoiler alert, I guess, for yesterday's series. Solar versus Hero is what I casted, and I saw a couple people discussing balance in the comment section below the video, and obviously you can discuss balance all you want, but I don't think that that particular series was a great example, because it turns out when you let, you know, Zorklings into your natural and your main base a dozen times, or, well, maybe not a dozen times, but like five times, <laughs> over and over and over again, the Zorklings got in, maybe balance isn't very relevant, right? And I've got a feeling that this game right here may turn out to be quite similar too. Well, I mean, Spirit decides to play this pretty passively. Not actually punishing his opponent at all. How many Phoenixes do we have right now? We're just gonna go for a single Phoenix at this point. I mean, it's nice, I guess, to deal with incoming Metavex, but at this point, we don't really even have any of those just yet. They're just started up at this point. This is the moment where Spirit decides to march across, and without Oracles, this is gonna be really difficult to hold. Um, we do have double shield battery here. I like the position of those shield batteries quite a bit, but I don't actually know if it's in range of the battery overcharge, which would be a problem. Okay, at least Showtime sees this army right now. Stimpak is done. Combat shields is done. Concussive shells also finished. Okay, he scans over here to reveal the army. Colossus on the back of this. If Showtime can survive until the Colossus is out, he's gonna feel way better. Spirit right now, though, ready to pull his opponent into a couple different angles all at once. Maybe that's where the Phoenixes can come in to intercept this, but again, Showtime doesn't know that this is coming, right? He doesn't see this, because he lost those Oracles. He does have a pylon over here, so Showtime basically making the best of a very bad situation here. So, trying to get vision here, to the best of his abilities. Okay. So, intercepting these drops would be awesome. 
Marines and Marauders at the same time moving here as well, and this is a classic one-two punch right here from our Terran player. What a god timing right there. That is incredibly well done right there from our Terran. This is what I'm saying, man. I feel like Spirit honestly is not getting really the credit that he deserves. The guy is looking on point right now. He knew exactly when that Colossus would be popping. I don't think that's luck. That is him playing this game repeatedly over and over and over again. Showtime actually not getting the charge upgrade yet either, so yeah, this is this is GG. Next up, we find ourselves on a dragon scales. And it looks like Spirit is once again opting to go for the engineering bay block. Yeah, he's probably thinking back to that second game. He know he knows he got a little bit lucky in game number three. This time around he is gonna get the block off. No probe waiting for him on the low ground either. Showtime is gonna scout the high ground and he sees, okay, everything's looking pretty good. The problem is that you can't really tell whether or not there's an engineering bay. So now he sees it. Showtime already though at 400 minerals. He is gonna be forced to now take his third base first once again. Okay. I like this start already right here for Spirit, who's now on match point. By the way, when it comes to the Aligalek world rankings of both of these players, Spirit is currently considered to be the rank 18 in the world and Showtime currently the rank 17. So Showtime has gone down a little bit as far as the rankings go and, well, Mr. Spirit has been climbing up steadily, but surely. The amount of money on the line for, ooh, this particular series is $200 for first place. So the winner of the series earns $200. Second place is $100. So not bad. But obviously, uh, yeah, 200 is nicer. Plus, <laughs> plus you end up uh, being the winner of uh, a tournament, which is always sweet. Okay, so. Despite the fact that he's forced to go for his third base first, Showtime is still gonna try and take control of the pacing of this game. I like seeing it. Again, I feel like most of the time when I see Protoss players win in this matchup right now, it's when they're being aggressive, when they're all over the place, when they're trying to create chaos. That's usually when Terran players seem to take the majority of their damage and where the Protoss players seem to win the majority of their games. Okay, so this is obviously an Oracle play. Oracles are gonna be able to get into the opponent's main base very rapidly. Couple of bruised SCVs already as well. That's certainly what he's hunting for. Spirit? Okay. Almost playing a, uh, a Terran versus Zerg build over here. Goes really quick. Triple CC. I actually don't really know exactly how this plays out. How many SCVs can you afford losing before it becomes a really big problem, right? Because you're obviously going to get multiple mules out. The mules are fantastic. You're gonna rebuild very rapidly too. Then again, Protoss doesn't really need all of these Stargates for that long, right? Like you make one Stargate, couple units out of it, usually you're fine. Unless you also want to go into Colossus play, I suppose. Then you might need the Phoenixes too. At this point, Terran does not realize what they're playing against yet. The Cyclone is only about a third of the way done. This Oracle is gonna get into the main base unscouted. And those low SCVs, they should certainly be targeted down. He's a little afraid right now. Yeah, of a potential widow mine hunting here or hiding here somewhere, so he's playing this safely. Getting the mule would be fantastic. Yeah. I feel like there could be a little bit more value coming out of that oracle there, but maybe it's because Showtime at the same time is also microing those adepts. Second oracle just about to pop, by the way. He's gonna see the cyclone, so. He knows that these uh, these units should be able to dive a little bit deeper, but now there's marines inside of the main base too. Okay, that wasn't all too efficient, but still. Seven workers worth of damage is a whole lot better than nothing, right? So now on the back of this, we hit a bit of a supply block, that kind of sucks, but Showtime also going for his third nexus, this one in the natural location. Okay. Cyclone is trying to figure out where exactly these oracles are coming from. Maybe he's trying to intercept it, actually, I was gonna say. It's very likely that, well, there's really only one or two spots here that are the main concern. Anyways, Adepts, ooh, get into the main base, that's a mistake. That now means that these Oracles can go back in as well with the Marines distracted. This is fantastic right here. Okay, so we got to see what Spirit's defensive gameplay is going to look right, right? So, we already have a third base. Ooh, he's gonna target fire this down. Okay, very nice. You know what, this may actually just be too much damage. Yeah, already 15 SCVs have gone down. 
If this would have been a four gate follow up, which I personally wouldn't have minded seeing at all, I think Showtime would just be able to push for the win right now. The thing is, he's gone for a third Nexus. He's now adding on additional gateways. Fair enough. This isn't the type of game where he can just go and end it. Instead, it's now Spirit who's going to go on the offensive and he's going to pull the boys as well. Okay, so only about yeah, 10 of the boys. So 10 SCVs are joining in the fray too. There's some really good siege tank locations on this map. So I'm curious to see where he's going to be opting to, uh, to defend. Yeah, because of the Nexus though, the Twilight Council and all that is a little bit later. So there's no upgrades available just yet for Showtime. Who doesn't really have that many units here? Bunker coming up as well. Okay, love to see that. He's going to need to pull his own workers here. And this could actually deal a tremendous amount of damage right now. There's very little firepower here in this Protoss army. The timing of that Nexus is nice if the Terran player leaves you alone. But I love the fact that Spirit is bringing all of those SCVs to party as well. Okay. One of the shield batteries going down. Look at him. Building five of those bunkers already. We're going to be retreating from the natural. Yeah, we're just giving up the natural altogether. There was a little bit of damage done as well, but I... Oh, no, the SCVs, obviously, were right here at the front. Fair enough. Protoss going for a counterattack instead. Maybe picking up a couple of reinforcements would be really nice. But already... Look at this. Mass bunker style. Good force foot over there. Already, though, a lot of damage here is being done by the Terran player. That Nexus is toast. Okay, we're gonna start working on some of the bunkers in the back. Fair enough. Charge at this point is done, but... He needs to decide when he, wanna, when he wants to collapse on top of all of this, right? And the question is, is there even really a correct moment? Unless you take down all of those SCVs very rapidly, it's gonna be difficult to break. Okay, well now the bunkers decide to be unloaded. This may very well be the moment. I don't think he saw it, so maybe a little bit of luck right here for Showtime. Does he have enough stuff, though? He takes down the Siege Tank. I do believe he will have enough, especially with reinforcements coming up. Hmm. So that's an awful lot of SCVs going down. A lot of bunkers and Marines and Siege Tanks also destroyed. Yeah. But he did kill the Nexus of the Protoss. And in the meantime, he has also, well, rebuilt his own economy at home quite nicely. We're still at 40 SCVs. Keep in mind, the triple CC is nice here. This is going to retaliate right now, or this is going to force Showtime right here to retaliate. He's got some units out, so he may as well try. He's once again expanding on the back of this. Now we have the armor upgrade coming up together with Blink. It's a strange wall-off over here, but how in the world do you break it, right? Spirit over here sitting behind a nice wall. I don't think this is really going to be that viable for him. Showtime, that is. I don't think he's really going to be able to push into this. Okay. That's a little bit unfortunate. Okay. Okay. Robo facility right now on the back of this too. Main bases are already starting to run low here. This will be a problem, especially for Spirit. Because those mules obviously cause them to mine out even faster. It's the only downside of mules. They're pretty fantastic, but sometimes they mine out your base a little bit quicker than you anticipated. Storm on the back of this. Interesting. Okay. So I thought this Templar Archives was going to be for Archons. And there may very well be a couple Archons, but we're going to be going for some of the High Templar. Very nice. Storm drops seem to be quite popular right now as well in this matchup. I've seen that a couple of times over the last few weeks. Very cool to see. I wonder if that's what Showtime is going to go for here. So what you do is you fly the Medivac or I guess the Prism, right? The, the Protoss Medivac into your opponent's bases and you try to lend storms on your opponent's mineral line. Especially doable when the Terran player is spread thinly on like three to four bases. When they're on two bases, I don't think it's a great choice, but you can still obviously save those High Templar as well um, inside of the Prism if you want to, you know, lend storms a little bit more conveniently. Spirit is unlikely to go for ghosts until he actually scouts all of this. At this point, he doesn't have the tech root for it just yet, and he doesn't really have the eco. In this matchup, you're usually aiming... <laughs> you're usually aiming for a... Uh, at least three base eco before you want to make that decision. Okay. Storm at this point is done. Very important right now that Showtime gets into a good spot. And this is nice for him right here, yeah. 
So containing the Terran right here on just a handful of bases in fantastic, right? Like, they're gonna run out. Look at this as well. Trying to create a sandwich. Not bad. He doesn't really need to engage, though. Showtime, that is. The Widow Mines here are quite scary. Ooh, don't lose the Prism. If you lose the Prism with the High Templar in it, like, I mean, that's, like, one of the few ways you can really... Oh, my God. Find yourself in a tough spot here. Terran really needs to find that base. Like, their income is already starting to really hurt. We have another base taken now in the meantime as well in the bottom left-hand corner. So, Showtime is enjoying uh, the fruits of his minerals. There's a big drop. Spirit, realizing the situation that he's in, he's figured out, okay, there's not a whole lot I can do. I'm gonna go and recall, says Showtime, but... Okay, I wasn't sure if there was a High Templar included there. He did include, I think, just a single one. Okay, Stalkers get to blink underneath that. That was a relatively desperate move. But I, uh, I think it turns out really well. Feedback's over here, Storm over here too, let's go! Showtime showing us why he's considered to be one of the very best Protoss players in the world. This game, yeah. It's aggression, once again, right? It's aggression that is allowing Showtime to be in this game. I almost feel like straight up macro is just not the way to play this matchup right now. Anyways, okay, well the front door is wide open. I think you could go. Yeah, very Showtime-like move. I think Hero probably would have doubled down there. You don't have enough energy, so that kind of sucks. He's instead gonna try and target fire down the command center itself. There's no prism to reinforce this right now, so that's a little bit annoying. Okay, well the prism is close by, but command center here eventually does fall. We also did have a widow mine drop inside of the main base that I did miss on camera. Okay. Looks like it didn't actually deal that much damage here in the end. Not enough damage anyways to justify this right now for Spirit. Spirit is forced into an all-in. He does have Ghost out right now. He's flying his old Ming base on over towards the low ground too to try and sustain himself for a little bit longer. But this is do or die right now for the Polish Terran. Colossi are coming up. Basically, Showtime is just going for every source of splash damage that he can muster. He's got five High Templar, okay? If they get Storms off on his army, that is gonna be fantastic for him. Wouldn't mind seeing a couple Zealots running on over uh, towards this location too, although there's a good chance that Showtime doesn't actually realize that this is taken. No, he's probably assuming that the main base is still, well, the main base. Looks like maybe eventually this prism is going down, but this is taking a long time. Yeah, I think it's actually fine right now for Showtime. Showtime has been maxing out over the course of the last couple of minutes. He's now at 193 supply, leading this game by 60 supply. All he needs to do is kill that Terran army once, and at this point, I mean, I think it's gonna be very manageable. Unless he gets his ghosts, uh, you know, on top of the High Templar, all of the... I don't know, Zealots accidentally move command and the, the Archons get EMP. I mean, I just don't see how this is going to work out. We're gonna go for a Doom Drop. Taking a page out of Beyond's book, but Showtime is all over it. Storm would be fantastic. Look at that beautiful location. There it is. And I've got a feeling that this is gonna be the end for the game. Yeah, no. I mean, Spirit is trying his best. He's trying his best, you know? Maybe the uh, previous game was a bit of an early GG. I prefer this GG timing that I think we're gonna see, yeah, exactly, right now from Spearhead. But very nice game right there from Showtime. And that takes us to Babylon, the final game in this best of five series. No SCVs, no probes, nothing moving across the map just yet. Just a standard, long, drawn-out macro game to close things out. I wouldn't mind it. Actually, Spirit has historically always been the type of guy who... Internally, as, as StarCraft commentators, we, we've joked about a little bit, right? Whenever you have like a Spirit match coming up. Normally, for a best of three series tournaments, they, they calculate about 45 minutes for a best of five. Usually it's about an hour and 15. But we've joked around about Spirit games maybe lasting about twice as long as the average. Uh, Spirit, historically, has always been a very big fan of well, playing the long, drawn-out macro games, and the same can be said for Showtime. I really feel like if you had these guys facing off against each other about a half year ago, this video would have been at least two hours long. But, um, yeah, the meta has changed. 
Both players apparently feeling more confident with their aggression. And maybe Showtime was playing it conservatively in the previous game, but still aggressively conservative. <laughs> or maybe conservatively aggressive. However you want to name it. Anyways. Standard Expos this time around. We do not have an NG Bay block either. Maybe uh, that's what Spirit was a little bit confused by as well, right? Maybe that Oracle coming in, it wasn't quite the timing that he expected. I really don't even feel like the Oracle itself dealt that much damage, like the first Oracle that showed up. But hand in hand with the Adepts and the very, very, yeah, save movement on the Oracle, because he was scared of a Widow Mine, uh, yeah, it turned out uh, to be a lot of damage in the end. A whole lot better Oracle control than in Game 3, that's for sure. Anyhow. Nexus on the low ground, Cybercore on the high ground, Command Center on the low ground here, straight into our reactor once again for Spirit. We have a single gas right here for Spirit. Mmm. Really? Is that what we're doing? Okay. Proxy Factory. The few times I've seen a Proxy Factory on this map, it's to ferry Terran units into the main base. So you go for a Proxy Factory. You make a bunch of Hellions, go for a proxy starport, make a medevac, drop them off in the dark space, roast all of the probes. It's a good strategy, if it works out. That's the main problem, I guess. Stargate coming up right now as well for Showtime, so Showtime can very easily contest this. If he actually... if, if that's even what's happening. Maybe this is something else entirely, but... If he sees it, right? That's the big problem. StarCraft's also... Uh, or always a game with very limited amounts of information, and Showtime at this point has very little intel. Showtime, by the way, has been in Clan Storm G, Stormgate, I guess, for a long time. I think the man is ready to take on a new challenge. At least I've noticed that Clan Tech on his, uh, on his units for, well, whenever they made that uh, announcement, right, for the upcoming RTS game from uh, Frost Giant. Anyhow, I haven't made an update video on that in a while. If you're interested, let me know down below in the comment section. I'm definitely... I could definitely make a video about that again. I mean, we haven't seen any gameplay yet, which is the main reason why I haven't, yeah, really been talking about it as much. We've seen a couple of screenshots here and there, though, so I eh, could go over some of it. Anyhow, yeah, so that's exactly the plan. So we are making Hellions over here together with a starport. Thank you for making me sound smart, Spirit. There's gonna maybe even be people that accuse me of already having seen this game. I promise you I haven't, okay? I'm just that smart. <laughs> <laughs> My brain's just that bit. No, this is a build that's pretty common. In the meantime, though, on the other side of the map, we have the Adepts. Okay, at least threatening a Shade by. It's just a small group of Marines. Spirit, though, ready to put all of his eggs in one basket, right? So, three of these Hellions is great. Perfect amount to start roasting the probes. And Well, the question is, when exactly does Showtime see it? He does have that Oracle instead of his opponent's main base right now, but already... Oh, no reaction here from Protoss at all. Already, the probes are finding their grave over here, and this is a ton of damage being done right now by our Terran player. Protoss has also lost, uh, or, or killed rather, a couple of SCVs, I suppose, but that's not really gonna justify this, and we're not even done. Yeah, this is bad. You can't really afford losing 23 SCVs at this level of play, believe it or not. Look at that probe. That man was tasked previously. Oh, okay, with building a Nexus. But there's no money remaining to build a Nexus, as it is Spirit who obtains the victory in a best of five series over Showtime. And therefore, he wins the ESL Open Cup 172 for the European region. Hey, if you made it all the way until the end of this video, please take the one second that it takes to hit the like button down below. I know it may be kind of annoying whenever YouTubers ask, but it really does help. And if you enjoyed watching this video, please take the one second that it takes to hit the subscribe button, as well as the little bell icon, so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. I post new ones pretty much every day. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to smile, and I'll see you once again in the next one.